Welcome to another tech video. So you got yourself a machine and you really want to install Windows 11 on it, but you run into this, quite annoying. So there's two ways you can do it. Um, in fact, there's three ways you can do it. Um, so there's the download assistant, there's a bootable USB drive, and there's a Windows 10 ISO image. So this we've just um, gone in and used the upgrade assistant and you can quite clearly see that uh, we're not going to be able to install Windows 11 on this laptop um, using this method. So here's the method that you can install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware. Right, so the first thing you want to do is to go off and navigate to um, Microsoft website and go to software download Windows 11 and you'll see three options. So the first option is the Windows 11 installation assistant. Second option is create Windows 11 installation media. And the third option is Windows 11 disk image. Now we want to use the disk image um, and the reason for that is it, we're going to use a different option contained within that image. So we're going to select our download, select Windows 11, and then we're going to click on download and then we're going to go down to this option that will appear here once you click on the download option and it will say select the product language. So we're obviously going to choose English. We're going to confirm that and that's going to give us a, a download link. So we're going to click on 64-bit download and that is then going to download the ISO image as you can see here, downloading. So once that's downloaded, um, we're going to be using something to create a bootable drive. So we're going to let that run through. While that's running through, we're going to open up a new browser and we're going to go to Google and we're going to download Rufus. So Rufus is uh, gives you the ability to um, boot or create bootable USB drives. So we're going to click on this. You can ignore all the adverts around it. And we're going to click on this one here, Rufus 3 version 3.17. Earlier versions don't contain uh, support for Windows 11, so we're going to click on this one here. We're going to close the advert. That's going to download Rufus. Once your ISO has downloaded, um, we can then make a start. Okay, so now we've got our Windows 11 downloaded. We can see our ISO here. We're going to use Rufus. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is you're going to select your um, drive which we haven't got a USB stick installed first uh, at the moment so you want to insert uh, a USB drive that's got at least 8 gig of memory on it so it needs to be at least an 8 gig stick and then we're going to select or go off and find our Windows 11 installation which is in our uh, it's on our desktop so we're going to go to desktop go into Windows 11 we're going to select our ISO and then, as you can see here, under the image option, we've got standard Windows 11 installation with TPM2 and secure boot. Now, if you're on older hardware that doesn't have TPM2, you won't be able to install it unless you change this to no TPM support. So we're going to select, drop the drop down, and we're going to say extended Windows 11 installation with no TPM and no secure boot. Our system is actually UEFI and it does have secure boot, but if you've got no TPM, that is the selection that you want. For us, um, because we're using UEFI, we're going to be selecting a GPT um, partition scheme and our target system is UEFI non-CSM. So this is non-legacy boot. That's all there is to it. Um, this is the important bit though, selecting no TPM and no secure boot. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on start. It's going to confirm that you want to overwrite everything on the drive. So we're going to say OK to that. That is then going to run through and make this USB stick bootable. OK, so once the USB drive has been created, you just close down Rufus and then you can eject the USB stick. Like that. 
And that can then be used to create your fresh Windows 11 install, which we'll run through shortly. Okay, so here we are. So the first thing you want to do is you want to select your various languages and your region. And our keyboard is set to English United Kingdom and the language you can't change. You want to keep that as uh, you want to select next. And we're going to select install now. Okay, so we want to tick the acceptance of the license terms. And we're going to do install Windows only, advanced. And we're going to go in and we're going to delete everything that we've got on the current drive that's installed. And we're going to select the drive, 256 gig drive there. Select next. <clears throat> this part of the installation is identical to Windows 10. Click on the restart now or let it restart on it by itself. So you want to select your region and we're going to select a United Kingdom keyboard. We don't want to add a second keyboard. And we're going to say I don't have internet. And we're going to continue with limited setup for now. And we're going to give our system a name or a username. And you can create yourself a password here. Or if you don't create a password, it will just keep booting in every time. So um, for this purpose today, we're going to not select a password. We're going to click on next. And we're going to say yes to location services. We're going to say no to find my device. We're going to say required only for the diagnostic data. No to improve inking and typing. Yes to get tailored experiences and yes to use the advertising ID. So once you've got Windows finally installed, um, you want to come to your Windows Update settings. So you click on your Start button, Settings. Then we're going to go down to Windows Update and it should have run through some checks in the background, which it has. So it's found um, a few bits and pieces that it is waiting to install. So we're going to install the updates. Don't worry about if you see an install error. The plan is to run through the Windows updates um, and keep running through those Windows updates until it's found um, nothing else to, to add. Obviously, you want to make sure that you're connected to either your Wi-Fi network or you've got a network cable plugged in for this. OK, so that's the install done for those few updates. Now we're going to click on for where we can see these retries. We're going to click on retry. And again, we're going to keep running through the Windows updates. Okay, so now we're going to give it a reboot. And we're going to step through this wizard. So this is because we installed um, without a network connection. So we're going to say continue. We're going to say don't update your browser settings because it's already set for that. We are going to click on back. We're going to say skip for now. And that brings us back into the front end. Now we're going to go back to Windows Update. Only instead of running through the normal Windows updates, we're going to click on Windows Update. And we're going to scroll down until we see advanced options. We're going to go into the advanced options. We're going to go into optional updates. And as you can see here, we've got 13 available. So this is quite important. And these are the driver updates for your particular system. So we're going to go through and we're going to install everything here. And the reason for that, I will show you. So we're going to move that out of the way a sec. We're going to go and do 
Uh, we're going to go to personalize. I'm going to go to themes. I'm going to scroll down until I see desktop icon settings. I'm just going to get a few more icons on the desktop. There are other ways of uh, going into your device manager, but um, this is my preferred way of doing it. So I do a right click on this PC, go to properties, and then I'm going to scroll down to the bottom until I see device manager. And let's have a look to see if we've got any unsupported things that haven't installed, which we do. So we've got two here. So this is where your additional driver updates are going to come into effect. So we're going to go again, we're going to go back. OK, so install selected updates. So we're going to do download and install. We're going to let this run through. And then um, once all these additional driver updates have installed, that will take care of everything in your uh, device manager to make sure that everything's installed correctly. Once that's done, you can go through and then continue with your updates just to make sure that you've got the system fully patched. And you can also see down here that uh, our Bluetooth driver's gone in. So that's it. Now we're going to do another restart. And there we are back in the system. OK, so we're not going to do any more updates for the time being. What we are going to do is we're going to go in and set our system clock, because if you notice, it's the wrong time. So we're going to go into adjust date and time and we're going to set our regional settings. So our time zone is incorrect at the moment. So we're going to scroll down until we find London, which should be UTC. There it is. We're going to select that. That's updated the time for us. And now we're going to go and we're going to carry on scrolling down to language and region. Because at the moment in the bottom right hand corner, you can see it's set to UK but it also gives you the option of United States. So we're going to go into language and region. And on the English, we're going to click on move up. And we're going to remove the United States. And then we're going to go to our three dots and we're going to go into our language options. And we're going to download our language pack. We've already got our basic typing pack installed because of the keyboard layout but we want the language pack. So that's our language pack installed. Now we can go back to our language and region. And then you can see here where it says the Windows display language is set to United States. So we're going to drop that down to United Kingdom. And once we do that, we're going to need to sign out and then sign back in again. So we're going to go sign out. And then sign back in. And now that's taken care of the language down the bottom. So that's defaulted. Everything is set to United Kingdom and set correctly. And then we're going to go back to Windows Update finally. And you can see here there's one more large um, cumulative update for Windows 11. So we're going to download and install that. And then once that's downloaded and installed, that is your system fully working with Windows 11. Um, you do need to be careful because obviously the TPM chip is there for a reason. But if you really want to run Windows 11 on unsupported hardware, then this is the way to do it. And then just to show you the laptop that we've been installing Windows 11 on, it's a Toshiba Satellite Pro. It's got a third gen Core i5 processor. It's a very basic laptop, but uh, it's got 8 gig of memory in and it's got a SSD drive in there. So it performs okay. Um, it's not the fastest, but it's perfectly adequate to run Windows 11 and yeah, seems to do the job well. So if you found that video useful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just want to say thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.